today I'm going to address some questions that I've had regarding the electronics of this RC build. A lot of people are keen to know how I plan to control all four motors and have them run at the same speed. To help with this I'm going to give you a brief overview in this video. So this is your typical RC setup. There's really nothing too complicated about this setup and that's one of the reasons why it works and why it's so popular. Now when using a setup that has a single motor like this there's usually gearing involved and then that power gets transferred to all of the drive wheels whether that be two wheel drive, four wheel drive or whatever you're running. Now with my build I want each wheel to have its own motor. The problem with this is that due to the tolerances that exist in electronics no two components are ever the same. This means that each motor has their own unique characteristics and they'll all be spinning at slightly different speeds. There's also the fact that each motor has its own ESC and they also have their own tolerances. So you can see how you can end up with this compounding error and without managing this error the car would basically be undrivable. One of the ways we can solve this problem is to use a microcontroller and in this particular case I'm using the STM32 by ST Microelectronics. These things are industry grade and are leagues above something like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. I won't get too deep into this but microcontrollers are basically a small chip that can be programmed and interfaced to other hardware. You can basically think of the microcontroller as the decision maker or the brain of the car. The plan for this build is to make the car its own embedded system. Long term I'd like to add an LCD display with live telemetry, Bluetooth communication and all kinds of other cool features. But for now I need to focus on the main task at hand which is obviously just driving the car. Using the microcontroller and some sensors we can create a feedback loop between the ESCs and the motors. The feedback loop I'm going to use is something called PID which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. In simple terms, a PID system tries to minimize error to provide precise control of hardware such as motors. These systems are vastly used in robotics all over the world. This is a Hall effect sensor. These sensors are used to measure the magnitude of a magnetic field. These are particularly useful for this project because we can simply place one of these next to each of the motors. Because brushless motors have magnets in them, we can read the pulses as the magnets pass over the sensor. If we know how many magnets are on the motor, we can work out the number of pulses per revolution and then the number of pulses per second and from here you can easily calculate RPM or whatever other unit you want to use. When the car is running, we can be measuring the RPM constantly and this reading can then be used to adjust the power to the wheels accordingly to give us real speed control. It's very likely that the brushless motors will be hard to control at lower speeds but this is something I'll have to experiment with. Since this car will have low torque anyway I don't think that'll be a huge issue. As you can see I set up this quick demo of servo and motor control. The microcontroller is reading the signals directly from the receiver. It's then using these signals to generate the appropriate PWM signals that the servo and motors are expecting. You can now see the potential here for features like steering differential. Essentially I'll be able to create a power ratio for the wheels based on the steering servo angle. This will make for exceptional handling. I also did a short demo with the wheels coupled to the motors but obviously I didn't want to push this very far because you can damage the belted tires if you go beyond around 6,000 RPM. Okay, so hopefully that cleared a few things up. And I understand that if you don't have an electronics background, a lot of this stuff can be intimidating or confusing. But I try to explain it at a higher level, not to bore everyone with the ins and outs of electronics and embedded systems. But if you are interested in taking a deeper dive into this stuff, leave a comment below, and if there's enough demand for it, I might make that video. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this update and learned something. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.